My name is Trent Morrell Meisenheimer. I'm a firefighter paramedic with Riverside County Fire Department, Cal Fire, and this is Report on Conditions. This week on the Report on Conditions, join us for Station 106's groundbreaking in the city of Beaumont, and a helicopter crew at Hemet Ryan Air Attack Base talk about their first night flight during the Fairview Fire. Hi, and thanks for joining Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department's Report on Conditions. I'm Tawny Castro. Last week, from September 12th through September 18th, our firefighters responded to 3,624 calls for service, including 2,731 medical emergencies and 111 fire-related calls. Of the fire calls, 22 were vegetation fires and 14 were structure fires. Let's dive into a few highlighted incidents from the past week. On Monday, September 12th, firefighters responded to a commercial structure fire just west of Reno Valley, where fire was burning outside of a 550,000 square foot building. Uh, this is a logistics center that had a lot of cardboard boxes stacked behind it. Somehow the cardboard boxes caught on fire, quickly spread to about four to five acres. The contents burning included high stacked cardboard boxes containing clothing and other household products. The fire quickly spread, burning about six acres worth of stored products, in addition to several forklifts and other machinery. Seven docked semi-truck trailers also caught fire, which melted the loading dock doors, allowing fire to enter into the commercial building. As the fire made a run towards the building, we made an interior push to protect the inside of the building and keep the material on the outside. Sprinklers within the structure helped keep the fire in check while crews placed hose lines along the interior to protect the building's contents. Five alarms of equipment were ordered, with five ladder trucks spraying water down into the flames. So the first alarm is six pieces of equipment. It includes a, a ladder truck, five engines, sometimes a squad, and a battalion chief. Additionally, each time we order an additional alarm, we get another four to five pieces of equipment that comes along with it. So five alarms, we're in the neighborhood of 20-something 20, 20 engines. We started getting master streams up and uh, the aerial ladders that you can see now. Thousands and thousands of gallons every minute are coming down. We've tapped into all the hydrants in the area. We've had the water company boost supply, and so we're just continuing to do as much water in there. However, the boxes are so deep and stacked that we're having to use heavy equipment like bulldozers to pull those boxes apart. And we actually have crews inside because the fire doors were breached uh, where the loading docks are. Firefighters did a great job on the inside and outside to keep this fire contained in the area that we had it. The interior attack was largely two and a half to bundles. Uh, we made a push from the uh, main entrance and worked our way about 200 to 300 feet back and kept the fire at bay at the loading docks. There was several trailers that uh, were involved with fire that we were not able to breach due to the fire conditions. Visibility inside was virtually zero. Conditions and the amount of material that was inside to be protected was vast. Uh, they did an amazing job. They were aggressive and uh, implemented a plan that ultimately ended up working. This was a collaborative effort with the aggressive firefighting on the exterior of the structure and aggressive firefighting done on the inside. Over time, the spread of the fire was stopped and resources remained on scene overnight for mop up. One firefighter was transported to a local hospital with minor injuries and has since been released. No civilian injuries were reported. As you see behind me, firefighters are still using heavy equipment to move material around so they can get to the hot spots. They'll be doing this throughout the day to make sure that there's no hot spot that they have to deal with later on during this incident. We'd also like to thank Transportation and Land Management Agency for coming out with their heavy equipment to assist with firefighters' efforts. On Wednesday, September 14th, firefighters were dispatched to reports of a commercial vehicle fire at the TA truck stop in the city of Coachella. The first arriving engine reported two semi-truck trailers well involved with fire at the rear of the truck stop. Fortunately, the tractors of the trailers had been disconnected and there were no immediate exposures to any additional semi-trucks or trailers. With a coordinated attack, firefighters kept the flames to the trailers of origin with no extension outside of the trailers. Crews remained on scene and coordinated with the trucking company for cleanup. No civilian or firefighter injuries were reported. It's the Firehouse Cooking Challenge, presented by Kitchen Kitchen for the chef in you. Welcome to the Firehouse Cooking Challenge. We all know firefighters are competitive by nature, but what you may not know 
is they're also wonderful cooks. This time it's going to be a challenge to see who can provide the best meal. Brought to you by Acme Movers and Mindset Masterclass. Tune in every week. As we navigate through National Preparedness Month, we'd like to refresh everyone's minds with safety tips to follow in the event of an earthquake. Let's learn from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. When the earth shakes, the ground moves, and things start to fall, you'll ask yourself, how prepared or unprepared are you? Have you removed objects from over the bed and over your head? Anchored your possessions securely to the wall. It won't be a pain, and you're not doing it in vain. Are your emergency kits packed? What about your family, your friends? Do they know what to do, how to get in touch, and where to meet? Do you know how to drop, cover, and hold on, covering your head and neck? What if you're outside? Or in a car? After the shaking stops, look around. Figure out what to do. Stay away from damaged areas. Turn on a radio. Reach out for help. And if you're trapped, do not move about. Stay calm. Only shout as a last resort. Once everything and everyone is safe, get prepared. An aftershock could be on its way. So before the earth shakes, the ground moves, and things start to fall, get prepared. Make a plan. Practice what you know, because an earthquake can happen anytime, anywhere. You never know. Throughout the duration of the Fairview Fire, air crews from the Hemet Ryan Air Attack Base flew day and night to help ground crews keep the flames at bay. Let's join one of the crews as they talk about their first night flight and teach us how they utilize night vision goggles. Last week during the Fairview Fire, we were using night vision goggles. The night vision goggles magnify the ambient light so that we can better see the fire and the heat signatures. But without the goggles, it's completely dark. We can't see anything. With the goggles, we can see the terrain and the hazards along with the fire and then make safe drops and stay away from the personnel on the ground. We've been doing training operations, so this is our first time flying under NVGs on a fire here in the unit. They've done a couple of different fires up north, and this is the first time it had been done in Riverside. It was pretty similar to when we go out and fight fire during the day. The only difference was our field of view is just less. In the back, I found myself looking underneath the goggles a lot. So when you're looking through those NVGs, it's kind of like looking through a toilet paper roll. So we have like a 40% field of view through that NVG. The perception changes drastically when using NVGs. There is an adjustment period for your eyes to just simply adjust to what you're looking at and through the NVG goggles, as well as the unaided. And I think all the training we've gotten prior to this incident helped us understand to be able to adapt to that. So when we got close to the fire, you find yourself a lot looking underneath to see what the fire is actually doing because you can't really see through the goggles. It's just going to magnify that light so the more intense the fire the brighter it's going to be and actually it makes it difficult to look directly at it so it can actually wash out the goggles if you're looking directly at a large fire. Like when you're up front flying like Tim was, um, you're using your NVGs to look outside and scanning the horizon for hazards and where you're going and then you're looking underneath the NVGs at all the instruments in the cockpit. Us in the back, we're also scanning through the NVGs and then underneath looking at the ground, the fire, the dip sites, that's where we pull water from. I might have the best view at first if I'm up front and call out a target, but then the guys in the back can actually get outside of the window and get a better view than we can up front. A lot of times they're gonna pick the target out and then give a countdown to the pilot and then the pilot will release the water. Right here. Yep. Three, two, one, drop. And then they will evaluate the drop and see, hey, next time we need to be this much left or right, or how did we do? And then we're trying to support those ground crews. Yeah, if you can go ahead and hit that, we're gonna get some dozers up there and try to go direct, but if you can knock it down, All right, go down for it, that'd be great. Three, two, razor one, drop. Yep, good hit. 
We also have other things we use like lasers. We use laser pointers, so the op soups in the back can shine a laser pointer down at a target, and it's not like you would look at a, a laser pointer if you played with your pets or something like that. You just see the dot on the ground. Under the goggles, you can see the entire beam all the way to where it goes, so you can actually shine it quite a distance out in front of the aircraft, and the guys up front can see it clearly, and then they know exactly where to go. Not only are you in it working, and your adrenaline's rushing, you're accounting for all this training. The better understanding of what you're looking at and going back and forth from the MVGs to the unaided helps uh, like at least myself in the opsuit position do a better job and be more dependable. The safety factor is heightened a lot more at night than the day. However, we do need to be a lot more precise, a lot more aware of what's happening. And with only two people in the back at night when it's pitch dark, very hard to do. On Tuesday, September 13th, the city of Beaumont held a groundbreaking ceremony for the city of Beaumont Fire Station number 106. The new station will house up to eight firefighters, multiple apparatus, and is expected to be completed in the next 12 months. That's going to do it for this week's report on conditions. To stay up to date on current incidents as they happen in Riverside County, be sure to follow at CALFIRERRU on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Did you happen to capture any pictures or videos of our firefighters in action? If so, send them our way at rrupio at fire.ca.gov. On behalf of your Cal Fire, Riverside County Fire Department, Public Affairs, and Community Education Bureau, I'm Tony Castro. Thanks for watching.